Welcome back to the garage, the place where we are making your Bronco, your dream Bronco. Now, if this is your first time here, I would love to have you subscribe. I'm putting out how-to videos for the weekend mechanic and providing the Bronco entertainment for the Bronco community. Now, today what I'm doing is I'm putting in a fan shroud for my 1975 Ford Bronco. Now, how many of you, like me, have been sitting at a traffic light and you watch your engine temperature rise and you wonder, is this little fan doing anything on my engine? Is it actually moving any air under the hood? Well, that's what I'm gonna test today. I've got this string here and I'm just gonna test if the, the air moves. So it's like pretty simple, like it's like a little makeshift air tunnel. If the string moves then, or the yarn, that's yarn on there. If the yarn moves, then that means you've got airflow. If it just sits where it is, that means you don't have airflow. So what I'm doing is running the engine at idle, then closing the hood and filming the air move past different parts of the engine. Now the important thing that I'm looking for with this is, is there air moving across the air cleaner? Is there air moving across the headers? I'm also gonna be using this, and this is an anemometer, and it measures air velocity. So you can see how much airflow you're actually getting uh, through different areas. So I'm just gonna hold this up now. Unfortunately, I can't really like, stick this in the engine with it closed. So there's probably a little bit of loss of airflow uh, just because the hood is gonna be open. Now I use the anemometer to measure uh, in front of the radiator but behind the grill because the fan is pushing air through the engine but it's also sucking air through the radiator to cool the radiator fluid down. The fan shroud could help with what's going on inside the engine, but the main purpose of that fan shroud is gonna be focusing the air that is coming through the radiator uh, by the fan. So the measurements of air velocity in meters per second without the fan shroud are the front passenger had 2.0, the rear fender passenger had zero, the front fender on the driver's side had 4.6 and the rear fender on the driver's side had 2.2. The air cleaner on the passenger side had 0.7. The air cleaner on the driver's side had 1.5 and then outside at the radiator had 2.0. So there are a couple interesting things that are going on here. Um, one of them I can't uh, control with the fan shroud is that I'm blocking the air velocity, the airflow on the passenger side. Like those headers aren't getting any air and it's likely because I have my heater hoses blocking the airflow that's coming off of the fan that should be moving past there. So that's something to fix. Uh, fan shroud's not gonna help that. But other than that though, it looks like the driver's side just gets more air. So um, I don't know if the fan shroud will help that at all. Is All of this is just leading to a fan shroud install. But it was just interesting. Like I, I'm, I'm just interested in seeing kind of what happens now with the fan shroud and if it'll even make a difference on anything inside the engine. I know it's gonna make a little bit of a difference pulling air through the radiator and it'll definitely help uh, how many times I've almost chopped my fingers off on that fan. Like the engine will be running, I'm doing something and like my tool will hit the fan and I'm like, Ugh! so, all right, back to work. All right, so the next step in all of this is just taking the fan off and putting the fan shroud on in place. Now you could remove the radiator if you're doing this and you, if you can't get to these bolts, um, but if you uh, just, you know, some good old fashioned elbow grease should get these uh, bolts on the mechanical fan out so that you can pull the mechanical fan off drop in the fan shroud and then tighten everything back down. But how are we gonna tighten it back down with the fan shroud on there? We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. <laughs> Thank you. 
the <laughs> fan trout won't even drop down without with, because the radiator is too close. So obviously, let's see if we can just move the radiator back. I don't know why I don't want to take the radiator out, but I don't. Let's just see if we can move it back and give us enough room to get this in there. Now, if you have a body lift like I do, you're gonna have this plate that goes uh, down below the radiator, so it actually gives the fan shroud something to screw into down there. All right, so I've got the fan shroud in place. I've got the fan in place. Uh, now, what I did, you can't see it because you just can't see anything now. I should have showed you this when I had the fan out, but the fan blades have these gaps. They're not equal gaps uh, with the fan blades. So when you're putting it back in, put it in so that you can actually reach your hand in or your socket wrench when the time comes when you can actually get a uh, get to a place where you can kind of get get in there, get your hand in there. Oh man, put some gloves on too when you do this. All right, so now I've got my fan shroud on. I've got the fan in. Uh, I'm gonna put the holders back in place that hold the radiator in place. I mean, one of the other things that I did was uh, earlier when we were watching this, there was like no air movement uh, over my headers. So I actually moved some of my heater hoses and tried to just kind of get my spark plug wires a little bit cleaned up. Um, and I'm gonna see if that helps. I've mentioned this before, but just to say it again, I'm not expecting the fan shroud to do a lot of impact in the engine. The fan shroud is really helping direct the air that's going through the radiator. So measurements with the fan shroud. The front fender passenger actually went down to 1.5. The rear fender passenger went up to 1.0, and that's probably because of me moving some of those heater hoses. The front fender on the driver's side also went down to 3.0, and the rear went down to zero. I'm not sure why that is, but that kind of surprised me uh, in general. The air cleaner on the passenger side went up to 0.8, whereas the air cleaner on the driver's side went down to 0.6. But the big one that, you know, the fan trout is really gonna affect, the outside at the radiator went up to 2.8 from 2.0. There you have it. Uh, obviously, um, the fan trout definitely works with sucking more air through the radiator. But the thing that, you know, I think is the big takeaway from this is the airflow in the Bronco sucks. I mean, even for how big it is, like there's just no airflow. Now I know a lot of you guys are gonna comment and say like, oh, you should do the uh, Taurus uh, fan upgrade and stuff like that. I might try that later, it'd be pretty fun. But also you have to like, we have to recognize a lot of this I did with the hood up, which totally blows us out of the water because the movement of the air is disrupted when this hood is up. So like those measurements to the back are probably a little bit different with the hood closed because that air is actually moving through over the engine and all that kind of stuff. But still it was a fun experiment to do. Uh, made, you know, just, just had a little fun with it. It confirmed all of our suspicions that no air moves <laughs> moves through this engine. If you get headers, don't do what I did and get stainless, get ceramic, because they move the heat better. And yeah, think about cutting some holes in the hood. 
I don't want to cut any hood, holes in the hood. I like how the stock hood looks, but there you have it. Uh, fun little video for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you need a fan trout, definitely check it out at Tom's Bronco Parts. I'll put a link in the description below. Thanks for watching. Check out some of the other videos. I'll see you guys next time.